what the heck are chord inversions? I remember the first time I heard that phrase, I was like, I have no idea what that is and it sounds way too fancy for me. But here's the thing, chord inversions don't have to be hard to understand. So today we're gonna talk about what they are and I'm gonna show you how you can start looking at chord inversions and using them. Now here's the trick, if you are already familiar with open chords, you can play chord inversions right away because the simplest, easiest way to think about a chord inversion is it's the same notes of a chord in a different order. So for example, check this out. I can take a regular open C chord like this and instead of playing all five strings, starting on my fifth string and playing all the way through my first string, I can just start from my fourth string. This is still a C chord, but now instead of starting on my C note and having that be the lowest note, I'm starting from this E note on my fourth string. Now, that's the simplest, easy way to think about a chord inversion is just taking a regular chord that you're already familiar with and only playing part of it. For example, I could take a regular G chord and I could just play my open second, third, and fourth strings. That's also a G chord but that's an inversion of that G chord. So think about it this way. If we have three notes that make up a basic chord, a basic triad. So for example, let's take the notes of the C major scale, which are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then it repeats, right? And the notes of our C major chord are C, E, and G from that scale. So it's the first, the third, and the fifth from that scale. Now normally when we think of a C chord, we think of playing the C note as the lowest note. So that's the lowest sounding note. So when we play our regular C open chord like this, that's the lowest note that we're playing. But what if we invert it? What if we take that C note, instead of it being the lowest note, we're gonna move it so now it's the highest note. So we want our E to be the lowest note. Now that's gonna give us a totally different sound. So check this out. One way that you can do this, and you need to be memorizing the notes on your fretboard at least a little bit, and understanding these chord inversions and how they work is a much more fun way to do this. I can take my E, and let's just use E on my sixth string, for example. So I'm gonna come up here to the 12th fret, which is my E on the sixth string. And then nearby, I need to find a G note. Well, my G note would be on the 10th fret of my A string. And then near that, I want my highest note to be a C. Well, the 10th fret on my fourth string is my C note. So instead of playing my C chord with C, E, and G, going in that order of lowest to highest, we're taking the C and we're putting it on top. And so the easiest way to do that would just be to use C, E, G, like that. Or I can play it up here with my 12th fret, my 10th fret on my fifth string, and my 10th fret on the 10th of my fourth string. That is all that a chord inversion is. I'm just inverting it by taking the lowest note and making it the highest note. Now doing that one time where we take the root note of the chord, the note that gives it its name like C and making it the highest note, we call that first inversion for that chord. So that means that the third of that chord is the lowest note in the chord that we're playing. So first inversion, third is the lowest note. Now we can do it one more time. We can take that third, which is the lowest note, which in this case is E, and we can invert it by taking E and putting E at the top. Now here's the trick. So that means G is now going to be our lowest note of our three notes, right? So before we had C, and we call that our root position, and now we're gonna have E be the lowest note, and that is our first inversion. So if we make G the lowest note and we put E on top, it's like playing a C chord, but only playing my third string, the first fret on my second string, and then my open first string. And that is what we call second inversion. Because the fifth of that chord, which in this case is a G note, is the lowest note. And then we have our C, and then we have our E, which our third is the highest. 
Now here's where this gets really cool. You can do that just simply with a C chord like that, just playing, this is your regular C, this is first inversion, second inversion, or you can play them on different positions. So if you're memorizing the notes across your fretboard, this is gonna make it a whole lot easier for you. And we can find these inversions all over the fretboard and it gets really cool. So check this out. Let's just stick to your lowest strings, your sixth string, your fifth string, your fourth string, okay? And we're gonna stick to our C, okay? Now here's the trick. What we're gonna do is we wanna find the first inversion, the second inversion, and the root position of that chord on those three strings. So let's start with root position. So that means I want my C note, my root note to be the lowest note, right? Well, C on my sixth string is going to be the eighth fret on my sixth string. And now the next string, I need to find either a G or an E, right? Well, I could find that if I do, there's a G on the 10th fret of my fifth string, right? But that would make it so that I have to skip a string to get my E on the third string, right? Let's try to keep it on the same. So instead of finding G, there's an E on the seventh fret of my fifth string. So let's do that. So we have C on the eighth fret of my sixth string, E on the seventh fret of my fifth string, and then there's a G note right here on the fifth fret of my fourth string. That's pretty close, right? So that way I have root position using my sixth, fifth, and fourth strings for a C chord. For C major, right? If you want to make it C minor, all you do is take the third note, which is our E in this case, and drop it one fret lower. Make it flatter by one fret, and you have C minor. Now let's find first inversion. Okay, so that means we want E, and then we're gonna find G, and then we're gonna find C. Well, we did this earlier. We used E right here, which is 12th fret on my sixth string, and then the 10th fret for G, and then the 10th fret on my fourth string for C. So that would be considered first inversion for that chord. Well, what about second inversion? For second inversion, we need to use G for the lowest note. So I'm gonna find G on my sixth string, which is the third fret. And then C is right next to it on the third fret of the fifth string. And then my closest E is the second fret of my fourth string. So right here, I have my root position, first inversion, and my second inversion. And now that's just using my fourth, fifth, and sixth strings just for a C chord, right? The magic of this is what happens when you use this with other chords. So for example, in the key of C, we have our C major chord, which is C, E, and G. But we also have our A minor chord, which the notes for an A minor chord are A, C, and E. So already, these two chords, our C major and our A minor, they have two notes in common. So check out how cool this is. We can take our regular C major chord. So this is root position of our C major chord. And that sounds great, right? But rather than having to switch from this to A minor and doing like a bar chord like this, or changing to open A minor or something like that, we can just change one note. If we know that we have C, E, and G for our C chord, well, our G chord is the highest note right here on the fourth string fifth fret. Well, let's just make that note an A note. That would make it go like this. I'm gonna play the eighth fret right here on my sixth string, and then I'm gonna bar and play the seventh fret on my fifth string for E, and then for A as well. And that gives us an inversion for A minor. Now C is the third of that A minor chord, so that means that we are playing first inversion for our A minor, if we do that, right? So we can go from playing C to A minor, and it's just changing the one note is all that happens. Here's what I suggest that you do. 
you can take all the chords that are in the key of C major, which are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished, and you can find inversions for all of those chords by finding the root note as the lowest note, the third as the lowest note, and the fifth as the lowest note. And you can do it on different strings as well. So today we stuck to the fourth, fifth, and sixth strings, but you can do your fifth, fourth, and third. You can do your second, third, and fourth. You can do your first, second, third. And you can also skip strings. So you could do your sixth string, your fifth string, and your third string. Or you could do your fifth string, your fourth string, and your second string. There's all sorts of different options for you to find these chord inversions. But here's the cool thing. The more that you do this, the more that you're trying to find these, you're going to start to see patterns coming out of it. You're going to start to notice certain things. And one of the best things that you can do for your fretboard knowledge and for your knowledge of the scales and the chords that are being played and stuff is actually go through and find these different chord inversions. Now we're going to talk about these more in other videos, but I just wanted to clarify for you what the heck are chord inversions? Because that is a question that a lot of people when they're starting out playing guitar are very confused by it. And they're like, what the heck does that mean? And so today I just wanted to break it down and show you really simply, it's the same notes of a chord, slightly different order. That's all it means. And so I hope that helps you out today. I hope that that makes it easy to understand what chord inversions are. So now when you hear it, you kind of know what's going on. But if you really want to boost your playing, start finding these chord inversions for different chords across the guitar and on different sets of strings. So if this was helpful for you, do leave me a comment down below and let me know. I would love to hear from you and thanks for watching. Now, if you want to make this easier for you, I want you to go check out this video next, which is about memorizing the notes on the fretboard. This video is gonna get you started so that you can memorize all the notes between your first fret and your 12th fret, and it only takes like five minutes a day. So go check out that video on how to memorize notes on the fretboard, have fun with these chord inversions, and I will catch you in the next video over here about memorizing the fretboard.